Brilliant. So we are live, everybody. Welcome to your future leaders today, Paul. We are on episode 59, episode of the saga that started off as something uh, to just help out. So we're on um, show 59 at the minute. Uh, my, name, my name is Daniel. I work alongside Richard, who's in a couple of boxes somewhere on this screen if we're in different layouts. Uh, we run future leaders to really just kind of find a bridge between people people that have not really been in the crypto world are kind of moving on board into it. Both agree that we think crypto is going to be the next evolution of not just finance, but how we look at the distributed systems around the planet. Um, being a part of this right now as it's growing is a little bit like being aware of the internet as it's moving through and the impact that it's going to have everywhere. So seeing that happen really is a wonderful thing. And for as long as the narrative out there on the streets is that crypto is bad or evil or anything like that, um, then we really want to make a, a vested space in, in sharing a message that really this is part of the future. Nope. So I'm looking for... Bear with me one second there. Cool. So uh, so welcome everyone to the call. We've got a couple of new people as well. As I've said before, uh, feel free to ask any questions as you're going along. But in the meantime, if you can just be aware of your environment, keep things quiet just so we can move through stuff. Uh, the purpose of this call is MetaMask. Um, which we're covering, which is like a, a bit of an extension which we'll go into in a minute. But I'm just really curious because there's a couple of new people on here. We have at least Mai, we have Trisha, we have Temi, and I think that's it, and Ray. So I'm just curious for, for myself and for Richard to get a bit of an insight of where you're at. Uh, we have people on this call that have never done crypto before last year, and now we're doing quite a lot of it. We've got some people that are everything in between. So I would love literally 10 or 20 seconds from each of you. I'll start with Ray, if that's okay, to just share, if you wish, just where you're at. Just gives us a bit of an idea um, on the language we'll use within this call, if you don't mind. So Ray. Plug it in your headphones. It's no worries. I'm just going to move over to Trisha. Trisha, do you want to give us... Uh, 10, 20 seconds, just a bit of a, an insight where you're at on your crypto journey, how far into it you've gone. I think I just oh, unmuted yeah. you. There, there we you go. go. Yeah, I'll uh, actually, let's see here. Okay, yeah, we're fine. Um, okay, so I I purchased uh, crypto, um, or I pur purchased Bitcoin in, um, in mid-December, approximately. And I got, my brother was here for, in Playa for <laughs> um, a month and he's heavy into it. Um, he's doing it full time. So um, he helped me get into it and then he left and there's just so much to learn. And I was also working full time. So um, it was just hard for me to grasp enough to just do everything on my own after that, you know, like buy again and um know what i'm doing um you know put it put my crypto somewhere safe as well like on a ledger or something i started in bybit and mm -hmm. i'm kind of stuck there right now <laughs> so i i would like to buy more um and i have i have u.s funds in the united states that i want to transfer over and i also have uh canadian funds i'm canadian and i have canadian funds that i want to transfer over transfer over and and then i started um, registering on Binance and then I noticed that there was Binance and then there's Binance US and I have a Canadian account and I have a US account so I wasn't sure how that was all going to work and okay. so anyway I'm, I'm just a little bit lost at the moment so I am hoping to learn how to do this on my own and be successful at it. That's cool well you just know that like I said this many, many times over it is like a coffee percolator don't try and or it's like going upstairs. You, you know, you ain't gonna get to the top of the stairs without going on the first, second, third step. So just, just things will, more space will be created as you go along. Um, on this call, we're particularly covering MetaMask, like one aspect of it, uh, but that might also answer some of your other questions as well. But after this call, use the group, post things in, and just, just chip away at it bit by bit. Uh, and then some of the other calls we have really like we're very free flow and open. Um, so then you can just kind of bring anything that is a problem at that time. Okay, um, thank you. I am just aware of a lot of other new people that have come as well. So welcome to Ben and to Ananda. We're doing a really quick, if we can, like 10, 20 seconds. Just, I just want to know roughly where you're at on your journey, whether you've bought anything, nothing, or anything like that. Uh, that would be wonderful before we rock on into the MetaMask stuff. So Ray, are you okay to give us um, your quick insight? 
Yeah, I'm ready. Um, so I am just starting on a journey. I'm uh, loaded crypto.com on on my phone and the Celsius wallet, and um, I haven't really done anything. So this is a huge learn for me. Um, I've got funds in the US and the UK, but I think I'm going to be going for the UK with doing this. Um, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay, cool. So at the minute, you've not actually purchased any cryptocurrency just yet? No, nothing. Cool. Okay, but you've got crypto.com and you're all registered on it. Um, I'm just finishing it. I'm going to do it while I'm listening on this call, actually. <laughs> I'm going to get going. Cool. Well, it will be an interactive call, so you can do a few things whilst we're on the call as well. Thank you very much, okay, Ray, great. for joining us. Uh, let's be uh, Okay, coming around to uh, my... Do you want to give us a quick um, 10, 20 seconds just on a minute on where you're at? Sure, sure. Is the feedback gone? Because I turned off the... It's, it wasn't feedback. It was just a hum in the background. So it's just wild. Okay, um, that might might be my hit. It's, it, it's cool whilst you're talking. Don't worry. All right. Um, I have uh, some Bitcoin. I got paid for some work in Bitcoin in 2016, I think it was. Nice. Yes. So I also had the advantage of the forking of the blockchain and so i have some bitcoin cash as well i use the wallet called blockchain mm -hmm. and want to keep them there because in case there are more forks happening in the future um you kind of have to leave them where they started right as far as i understand mm, no. no but we no. can we can cover that another time so long as they're yeah, on right. any exchange that supports the fork you're totally fine all right Okay, well, that's good to know. Anyway, I've been happy with that. And then I've been using the Wirex wallet uh, and card for when I wanted to exchange and cash out some of them. Um, and then I've been, I'm looking into at the moment to the, at the Hyperfond. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. So <sighs> that's, that's where I'm at. So I think I have a, at least like a medium level understanding of the crypto space. Oh, also, I'm really interested in Monero, but I haven't really figured out how to get some yet. Don't worry, we can. Uh, you, we like to answer that in the group as well. Um, uh, okay. Quickly, round to uh, Ben. Are you okay to to share a minute on where you're at? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, I've only been a member of this group for about. <laughs> and was delighted to find it. Um, and so I don't know if I really should be sharing since I've already been here for about four weeks. I didn't, I didn't realize it was you, Ben. <laughs> I don't know why I did it, to be fair. Um, all right, cool. It's nice to have you on again, sir. I know where you're at. Okay. You're, you're an OG in this space anyway, so it's cool. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Cheers. You too. Uh, Temi. Are you Hello. okay to share? Hello. <laughs> This is my first time here. I don't have Welcome. much exposure. So okay. I'm willing to learn everything I can learn, really. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Well, just welcome along. Some people just kind of listen in. Uh, it all filters through the brain at some point. Uh, and I hope that whatever we go through today is useful to you as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ananda. Oh, I muted you. Sorry. Hi, I'm uh, so happy to be here. Thank you for holding this. Um, so let's see, I uh, started investing in crypto last spring, so about a year ago, not quite a year, but almost. Um, I have something like uh, about 14 coins maybe in my wallet. And I'm just... Um, I've just been learning like, you know, bit by bit in the past year, but I'm not like focusing on it in a huge way. So I'm still, I would still call myself a beginner, but I, I have experience with um, exchanges on the on ramps and I actually have a MetaMask account that I started probably uh, a couple weeks ago. So I'm, I'm new to that as well. Cool. So you're an experienced beginner. Yeah. That's cool. I like it. There is a space for that. I can understand that. Awesome. All right, Ananda, well, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, let's go to Jerry. 
last but not least, Jerry, are you okay to share a minute just where you're at with your journey? I think I've just muted you. Can there you hear go. me? Can you hear me? Perfect. Oh, you can. Uh, well, I just heard uh, the previous speaker say she, her story. I'm, I'm uh, probably in for since 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, more tokens than I can manage. I just got a BlockFi, and man, do I love that app! It's the best app I think I've ever used in my life. It's so intuitive. But I just got a BlockFi um, Fly wallet and kind of divided my portfolio up into OG coins and new coins and Hail Mary, got, why don't I give it a try coins, um, my catastrophic loss coins, right? So <laughs> it was, and everybody that's been there for a while has those things, right? So I thought um, when, I, when I split my portfolio up that way, it was a really interesting perspective because I could see what was really driving all my gains. And to tell you the truth, it's it, a lot of it is the OG coins I've just been hodling, you know, all these new coins. Um, you know, I got distracted by some of the DEX coins and some of, um, uh, you know, just a lot, there's just so many new things out there now between NFTs and exchange coins and, um, you know, and it's hard not to buy some of that stuff. So I've got some, some new things, some, some of the old stuff, old blockchains, new, New things, and you know, I'm I'm in deep enough to be pretty confused uh, because mm -hmm. it's all every day is about researching something, um, and um, that's kind of my story. And you know, but to tell you the truth, I got I don't know what um, be, you know beyond the ideology got me so hooked onto crypto, but I'm sure if I put half the time I put into crypto into the stock market research or into um, you know, mutual funds or different index funds or studying so like I know whatever you know like the the time we put into crypto if we devoted anywhere else we'd be experts there too right um, yeah uh, but you wouldn't I don't know if you'd necessarily would uh, have as good a returns over the course of time but you definitely yeah. would have uh, you put in like crypto can easily suck you in and like anything you put enough time into something you very quickly um, roll through your understanding of it to a point where it does become all consuming and you do learn a lot with it as well. It is. So well, I'm, I'm going to keep it there, Jerry, just because okay. we have a, a load to get through for, for this call. And um, I just I, whenever there's new people, we like to just quickly just uh, spend a couple of minutes. It just gives us a bit of an idea of where people are at. Um, right. And actually, Jerry, so um, Jerry, like, is on the, the cost bend of an OG as well. So Deborah asked, what is an OG? Um, so as far as I'm aware, OG is old guy. I don't think the G stands for anything else. Uh, Richard, would you say OG is old guy? Well, I always used to think used to think it was original gangster. <laughs> oh, it could be original gangster. Austin says original gangster. I always thought it was old guy. The economy is the same thing, doesn't it? Basically, you know, you, you you've been in this space for a long time. You, you're an old hat. You know, you you've been around for a while. So, yeah. I was. I'm so he's OG, also taken from like the hip hop world as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just I'm clearly because because I don't wear a baseball cap to see. So you and Austin, because Austin had it straight away, just, you're just down with it. So that is an OG, Deborah. Pretty much any, or definitely anyone that's like in the crypto space pre-2016 uh, would be considered an OG. And so if you're like 17, like you're, you're on the cusp of it. And I think every, every wave that comes through, which are about four years, whoever was just on the back of the last wave could easily be like an OG. But then you meet someone like on the last call who'd been in it since um, uh, Peter who'd been in it since 2011. Um, there's yeah. like a, like triple OG, you know, like, like pay homage sort of thing. So that's what an OG is. Uh, gangster is less sexist, yeah. I felt my hesitancy when I was going to say old guy. That's why I was like, OG. <laughs> um, so that's what an OG is. Uh, but we will add that to the glossary. If someone can just chuck that into Telegram, because uh, we'll make sure that goes in there as well. Um, ben, thank you for the, uh, Ben sent me a, a, a big glossary as well today so we're kind of going to merge things together i'm going to have it publicly available because it is an industry that's not short of its tlas i can tell you that right last thing we do before we cut straight into it is we're gonna have a group photo turn your cameras off if you don't want to be on it turn your cameras on if you do want to be on it i'll give you a countdown in a few seconds otherwise i want you nice big fancy smiles uh, let's have a look
And we're going to take a photo in five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Cool. Still haven't used those photos at all, but at some point, at some point, we might do. Cool. All right. And it is Ananda. I thought so. I recognized the voice when you came on then. Hello, darling. So let's get straight into it. Um, a few weeks ago, we were going to have a MetaMask call and I couldn't share my screen. Um, so we ended up doing something else. It still required a lot of screen sharing, but we explained it as best as we could. Um, so we're due a MetaMask call, but this one got prompted because uh, I was talking about airdrops. I probably wrote that a bit, not necessarily prematurely, but I threw it in there because I really wanted to get it out so it was said. But then by saying it, it just opens up a million questions. Um, and then, that, But that has prompted us to kind of get this call um, up and running. And we just put together some, uh, some nice slides to kind of take us through it. But the context around um, where that came from is because you, you'll have heard people talk about airdrops. And for those that are not aware what the term means, mm -hmm. think of it like in the same way a government may just kind of deliver helicopter money to people, stimulus checks and all these things. Um, coins, cryptocurrency companies that have tokens, may choose to enter the market in many ways. One of those ways is by literally distributing their tokens free of charge to people. And they can choose a set of criteria. So people that have used this platform within the past three months all get 400 tokens, so to speak. Um, and um, uh, you never know when they're going to come. You never know who's going to choose that route. But there has been a couple over the last six months or a year that have been really successful. And um, there may come a time when MetaMask choose to do the same. And so I kind of wanted the people with an FLT to be aware of that. And it's good to understand MetaMask. So we're kind of combining these things together. Uh, but obviously, before we really go down the potential, and they might never do it, of airdrops, first you've got to understand yeah. MetaMask anyway. Um, so we thought, right, well, let's do a bit of a call on it, take some people through it. And um, see where it fits into your how you're using crypto. And if you're completely starting off anew, um, I would put a caveat that I wouldn't be recommending MetaMask to anybody that's brand new until they've just kind of got on an exchange, like where Ray's at. Ray's signed onto an exchange, has money ready to go in and buy something. You know, that, that's step one. Like get on an exchange, buy something. But once you've done that a couple of times, you kind of eventually want to get to a point where you do want to play around with MetaMask. Um, and that's where this call will come in handy. So if you don't use it today, that's cool. Uh, but you might listen back to the video further down the line and it'll make a lot more sense. Uh, so for now, sit back and enjoy the ride. So uh, I'm going to kind of just uh, come over to Richard because I really love, I suppose, just to begin with, um, like Richard, how would you even explain what MetaMask is? Um, how you want to begin? Yeah. Okay. So I think most people are kind of familiar with, um, should be familiar now with the idea of having their money on an exchange, you know, in whether it's crypto.com or Binance, where they've kind of bought, um, you know, some of the, um, the, you know, the main coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum, many things like that. Um, and you have a cold wallet, which is, we've talked about before, which is Trezor or, um, you know, something like Ledger, which is offline um, and isn't connected to the internet. And then you'll have something in the middle, which is a hot wallet, um, something like um, Exodus or Atomic, um, which you download onto your computer or your phone and, um, uh, and you access your, you can move, keep your coins on there. MetaMask is what, one that sits inside your browser um, and you'll download it as an extension. You can either use it within um, your browser or you'll click it and it'll pop up. And what that does is, I mean, you can keep your crypto in there. It's not usually very advisable, but it's not super secure as a, as a wallet. There's better solutions for that. But what it allows you to do is to then connect that to something that you might have heard of called Uniswap, which is a place, a decentralized exchange, which is like, um, a decentralized version of Binance or Coinbase or one of these, you know, where you can kind of basically trade and swap coins. 
So it's, I mean, I don't know how long, you know, it's, it's relatively new and it's a little bit more geeky and technical. Um, but if people are keen, as if people keep bringing up on these calls about buying more altcoins and buying, you know, buying smaller amounts, and then this is the kind of route you would potentially go down because a lot of the more newer coins are only available through this sort of medium, basically. So it, there's a lot of technical jargon in that if you are quite new to it. But essentially, it's a, 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 um, a crypto wallet that you can access via your browser. Be the easiest way to say it. Yeah, and I think the the, the big thing here, like um, Austin just put in the group in the chat, like should you buy ETH directly with MetaMask? It's really important to understand. And uh, we did a whole call on this: is that um, some exchanges, some places, sit between fiat money. And for those that are new on here, fiat's just like normal pounds, dollars, sterling, CAD, all that sort of stuff, and then the crypto space. And they sit between the two. But then some places only work with crypto, and MetaMask is one of those. So you wouldn't go onto MetaMask to buy any coin with fiat. You would you would only send cryptocurrency to it, and you could swap. And do various other things with it. Um, uh, I want to put in one thing here, and I, I want to start to drop this word in, but some of you uh, may have heard this, some of you might not, is Web 3.0. And we're moving to a space where we're having the third iteration of the internet. Um, the first iteration was just like uh, shopping screens, just screens that you, not even shopping screens, just um, uh, storefront windows, that's it. Web 2.0 was interaction. You can buy things. You can talk on the internet. There's a two-way conversation going on. But Web 3.0 is a, is a, it's almost like a third dimension to that, whereby you can be on somewhere. You've got a plug-in for your bank. You've got a plug-in for some other social. You've got a plug-in for your, I don't know, your fridge. And all these things are constantly working and talking with each other. So one of the things that MetaMask is, is Web 3.0 already. And that means that I can land on a site. That site knows I have this browser extension and will say, do you want to load your crypto wallet? So that if I wanted to purchase something, I can literally just click a button, boom, and it's purchased. And it's that, um, it's that seamlessness where Web 3.0 is coming in. That's where one of the, way, one of the places where MetaMask sits. It's, uh, it's trying to um, simplify the whole, per the whole idea of, your finances aren't separate to this, this digital world. So I just want to put that, it's a bit of a side note, it's a bit geeky, but um, you'll hear it more and more, Web 3.0 is coming around more and more. And uh, for some of you that are building your own websites, you might want to look into stuff like that as well. Cool. Um, so do, um, we wanted to, uh, just so I can see show of hands if you're on screen or like how many of you are in front of a laptop right now? Yeah, okay, so most. Okay, cool. So then uh, if you're not using MetaMask, I would highly advise you as we're going through this to do it, yeah? Um, if you're not, Austin just said he's not, then, then that's cool. You can just watch it. You can listen to it back. We can give you a copy of the slides. But it's just a nice way to kind of go through this process. Even if you don't use the MetaMask wallet afterwards, it's like doing anything. There's no experience like personal experience. So I would recommend doing that. We'll go through it nice and slowly. Uh, we can ask questions along the way. And if um, if something's not clear to people, people are seeing something different, please just kind of pause. There's no reason that we have to go super, super fast on this at all. Um, I'm trying to work out, Richard, whether it makes more sense. Do you want to go through the slides? I was going to say, how do we share two screens? We can't share two screens. Can we? I, I would say share, you know, if you want to share your screen, I think your internet's a bit more robust than mine. Um, but yeah, I'd, yeah. Um, I'll prompt you if needed, but um, you know, we know what we're doing, don't we, in terms of the steps that are done. So I can, I can you know, start off by saying, if someone's sat on a browser and they want to go through this process, um, sat in front of a laptop and want to go through this process, then the first thing would be to um, uh, make sure that they've got the right browser, which would, you know, we were just debating that earlier today, whether it's Chrome or uh, Yeah, Brave. I think... I think if we stick with Brave and, Brave and Chrome for now, um, yeah. they're going to be the simplest. Because if someone's already using Chrome, um, stick to it. Um, mm -hmm. And if if people are unsure on them, just minimize this a little bit. 
Okay, is my screen shared? Yeah. I just have a curiosity. Is, um, is that... There we go, cool. All right, so let's have a look. What are we going to first? Uh, again, back to everyone that's on camera. Let me just work out. I'm gonna actually, I'm not gonna have it um, full screen. So I'm gonna be able to see everybody as well. Well, if you want to do that, I'll keep an eye on everybody. And if anyone's got any questions, I'll put in the hands up. Okay, what I wanted to know is like basically, uh, it's going to be much easier if people are using um, Chrome, Firefox, Brave, or Edge. So mm -hmm. you've already got it installed. Just go to whatever you're used to, whatever you normally use, because um, there's no point trying to communicate, uh, uh, create more complexity at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, I'm well, sure people have got that open. Okay, once you've got it open, um, you can either search for, um, you can either go to the, the store, but you, you'll have seen people, you might have seen news articles where people started downloading false versions of things. This happens more with Google than Android, than, um, uh, than Apple products because of the way the store works. There's a, a kind of a golden rule with the crypto. If you really want to make sure what you're downloading is authentic, you go to the company's website, and then from the company's website, you'll be able to find um, you'll be able to find the thing you're looking for. So in the chat right now, I'm going to share. Participants, and I can find the chat. There we go, chat. Okay, I'm going to share the link that will take you to the website. So it's always good to make sure, because it really is important in crypto, because you're going to be using something called a seed phrase. And if someone does get a hold of that seed phrase, they will be able to take any crypto that's related to that. So you really do want to, the, uh, we did a call on this a couple of weeks ago, just really understanding the, the, the safety element of it. Um, Jerry, is your hand up to ask a question, or is that from before? If you can just have a look at that. Um, Richard says, Richard Almeida says, I'm using Chrome, but it's coming up in Spanish. And I'm assuming you're not Spanish. Uh, the that my Chrome does that sometimes if I'm using a VPN. So if you're using a VPN, check where you're registered to. Um, when you say it's coming up in Spanish, what just you can unmute yourself. What's coming up in Spanish? The uh, introduction. So you know, when the little fox moves its head with with your cursor. Bienvenido, I'm at the mask. Um, and to, I mean, you're, you're, when you click on that link to take to MetaMask, yeah? Yeah, and then everything else comes up. It asks me if I'm new to MetaMask. Yeah. And then gives me two options. But that link actually doesn't work for me. Just go to MetaMask. It's quite strange. Not, none, of my, none of my other browsers is, uh, is in Spanish. Usually, <laughs> He asked me to translate if I want to read it. Right. So, oh, and it's not giving me the option to change it back either. That's the extension. Is that URL correct, would you? That's the last dialogue. Well, not. Let me see if I can. Carry on. Carry on it. Uh, so weird that that's not working for me. Um, okay, so then uh, for yourself, um, Richard, are you it? So you're able to get on the MetaMask website, yeah? Let me just go, carries on it. Oh, it's popping on the thing here, yeah, save a sec. Yeah, that, that link works fine for me, the .io slash download .html. Maybe it's, are you, is it because you're in Spain, uh, Mexico, I don't know. I got no, no, no. I know, I know. I you should not enter this information. It's okay, learn more. It's because it's uh, my browsers. Um, no, it's not giving me an option, is it? Is it good? Yeah. Okay. Can we do this via the app as well? Which app? The MetaMask app. No, MetaMask app's slightly different. You, you can do, yeah. Uh, so if you want to do it using your phone, download MetaMask from the App Store. 
but verify where it says owner that it's metamask.io just so that, because there are there are false metamask browsers there it's come down the link comes directly from the web from the your link because it gives options yeah perfect if you, yeah if you're getting that from the um from the link that it was sent across that's perfectly fine perfect right here for those that have downloaded and installed it um go back to here let's have a look you'll see it kind of has this sort of a, a picture here just like this well it won't look just like that because this is signed in I'm going to assume that people are cool with that. So let's move on to the next bit. And if you're, uh, Richard Almeida, if you're um, on your phone, I imagine as soon as you've installed the app and you open it, you're going to get something that either says get started or you're going to have something that says import to wallet or create a wallet. Cool. Um, I'm... I don't want to complicate things here, but I want to at least say something because I feel it's right to say it. For those of you who already are in crypto and already have a seed phrase, um, you could, if you wished, enter that seed phrase in here. And if you entered that seed phrase in here, you would have access to some of the wallets that you've already got. You don't have to keep creating a seed phrase every single time. The actual end goal is, Think of it like this, so I want to explain to us. One seed literally is birth to a tree that's got multiple branches, and each of those branches can be a different coin, a different wallet, it's kind of like a universal code that unlocks accounts. Um, so you could, if you wished, import wallet and put your seed phrase in there so that you're always using the same seed phrase. Or temporarily for this one, you could set up a new one and at the end just kind of thin it, I suppose. I'm not using it again. So I'm just sharing that because... I think people do get confused with seed phrases and when to use them. Um, Sorry, and if you're Dan, new in that- a question about that. Sure. Um, so I've had enormous problems with my ledger. Uh, the first one malfunctioned. The second one doesn't seem to be much better. I've got the seed phrase. Can I just use the seed phrase from my ledger in order to be able to access the coins that I was using my ledger with? Absolutely, but there's a caveat. The, and this is as far as I've seen it. MetaMask, uh, let's say, only works with a thousand coins. Yeah, most of them are ERC twenty related. If you had some weird obscure coin, um, or even Bitcoin, yeah, you won't right. see it. You won't see it in MetaMask. Oh, okay. Yeah, some of but it. But that doesn't that doesn't mean it's not there. So, so a seed phrase produces a lot of wallets. Yeah, and, and let's just say that that is universal. But then. Uh, 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 sorry, it produces a lot of addresses. And a, a, a wallet app like MetaMask, Ledger Live, Atomic, uh, Tre uh, Trezor, um, Exodus, they're like Windows, with Windows, not like Microsoft Windows, but like portals to look at this tree. But every window can only see different aspects of the tree. So um, uh, you can only see aspects that whoever made the window, the portal, allows you to look at so metamask only really works with the rc20 tokens so you can look at your seed you can look at the addresses but you're not going to see the tokens that are not the rc20 does that kind of answer your question so that one seed phrase you've got um is yours the fact that your ledge is broken is irrelevant you know you could um, enter your seed phrase into a million different uh, website apps if you wished um and gain access to stuff. You could lend it into uh, uh, Exodus and gain access to stuff. Okay, yeah, because I do have some Bitcoin and some ETH and a few other um, coins on my ledger. So maybe it'd be better to enter the seed phrase in Exodus then, then I could see all of them. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, well, uh, the question I haven't got answered to that at the minute is if you had three Bitcoin addresses and you enter your seed phrase into Exodus, I don't know which one it picks, probably the first one but that doesn't mean the other two aren't there because in Exodus, you can only see one Bitcoin address. Whereas in like Ledger, you can see multiple Bitcoin addresses. Okay. Does, that, does that answer that question? Cool, yeah, no worries. Nice. 
Um, the, the whole thing around seeds, I think, is a really big misconception for a lot of people. And that's why at this point here, I just wanted to, I wish someone had told me that ages ago, that once you have a seed, you, you just protect it. Just kind of look, because I have like 15 seeds. And, and I use, and when people have these like special crypto steels that hold them, like I got really confused. What do I walk around with 15 secret steel encoded things on me? And I realized now that you only need one seed and that seed, what was it that Andrea said? There's more, at, there's, there's more combinations of seeds and addresses than there are atoms in the entire universe. Just to give you an idea of the never endingness of it, so to speak. Uh, but let's carry on. So for those that are on this page here, um, you're going to click create a wallet. You do it on your phone. You can do it on uh, your computer. And when you create a wallet, next step is going to ask you to put the password in. You need to go um, to yeah, create a wallet, not import a wallet, obviously. Yes. Um, if you do click import a wallet, that's because you have one to import. It will ask for your seed phrase. And the next step will still be password. Yeah. So it should be on the screen. It says Matt. Um, so, Daniel, so... Uh, I imported my wallets, sorry, but how would they know which of my wallets it is? Uh, so it will, if you've got to the point where you've imported a wallet, let's just say you have 20 addresses. Let's just assume that it can, that it's only able to work with 10 of them. Then you'll be able to see all 10. If you can't see all 10, there is a process where you add a coin and all of a sudden your coins will be there. Because remember that your coins are not in your wallet. They're on a, they're on a blockchain. A bit like I've explained to someone before now that your, your emails are not on your phone. They're in a server in the cloud. Your phone is just a window, a portal to see those emails. So your actual coins, your crypto is not in your wallet. It's, a, it's, it's, in, it's in the blockchain. Think of it like the cloud. And your wallet just enables you to look at that um, to look at that blockchain. Oh, so okay. if we you, can hear you, Daniel. Um, you're cutting out. I'm not sure what's happening. Am I back on now? Uh, one, two, one, two. I hear you very faded. Sound okay to me, mate. I'm not sure. It's on my own. It's okay with your end? Yeah. I think it's because I just picked up my phone. So I think it just. Uh... Am I back on for you, Leticia? I don't know why I hear you very faint. Okay, does everyone else thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay. Yep, yeah, good. Richard, you just say hello, and Leticia, tell me if you think okay. Richard's the same. I can hear you now. You're back now. Okay, let's go on. So, um, when it pulls those, uh, when you if you do an import, then it will have access to stuff, but you might not see all your coins. You have to manually add them. Uh, we'll kind of cover that at the end. So just bear with us for a minute, Leticia. Okay. Okay. So create a password, everyone, I, and I have a, then I have it's going to... Sure, Mike. I have my. a question, well, because before I get to that process, there it's asking me if I want to help improve MetaMask. Do I want to say no thank you or agree to that? So uh, it, what's it asking? It's just uh, like kind of T and Cs, if you want to help improve it like you do, you know, with any, any website. It's up to you. If you don't want to agree to it, don't agree to it. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference, really. All right. It's, it's, basically, it's basically giving them, um, like... Mm -hmm fault reports and things like that if uh, if stuff happens. Yeah, um, Ben's talking about having a call just on seed phrases. I, I, I agree, Ben. I want to do some playing with seed phrases first, um, especially with like uh, Exodus. So I, I want to do that. And then I think it would be a good call to have a seed phrase. And if I'm honest, it should be a really early one for people on the crypto journey because I think seed phrases is, is really confusing until the penny drops. So, yeah. Okay, so this secret backup phrase, if you're at this point, um, this is the seed phrase. This is the thing that you don't show people. Uh, it's 12 or 24 words. Um, I think the MetaMask one is 12 words. Um and it is a, it's a unique combination of words that come out of a pot. So they're like pre-approved words, let's say. 
there is a general viewpoint to never type it into a computer to be really, really safe. Like, you know, you want to ideally be writing it down. And I am a big proponent of password managers and all sorts of things like that. But I, I really am coming around to this idea that um, just don't type it. It's, it becomes so important. Like the really big point with, with all cryptocurrencies is this idea of sovereign finance. If you, you can't lose the money in your bank, even if you lost access to the bank, you could walk into that bank with your passport and say, this is who I am. And you will be able to get access to your funds. Uh, you can't do that with crypto. If, if you lose access to your funds, if someone steals your funds, there is nobody higher than you to go to. So it's the ultimate form of sovereign finance. There's no police really uh, that can help you. It's gone. So the, the, the last bastion of security are these seed phrases, which is why they're so important. And they, they were never really stressed to me when I was kind of first getting into crypto. I kind of, I, if I'm honest, I just thought they were a bit of a pain. I wrote them down because I said it's really important, but I didn't understand why. And this, this secret, this secret backup phrase is your seed and is um, um, is what creates all of your wallets. I hope that makes enough sense. It's, it's really counterintuitive because everyone feels like, you know, crypto is so futuristic and it's this thing that's so, so technical, technologically superior. But at the end of the day, you go and write this down and try and don't lose this piece of paper because it's, it's, it seems counterintuitive, but it is like, you know, it's the ultimate keys to, to the access to the, of what you put into this wallet. So, yeah. Um, so, and as you realize, as you, as you say, as you realize that it can apply to any wallet, anywhere not just metamask then it becomes more and more important so so yeah so i hope everyone that's walking through this process has, has written that down it's very important as well to make sure that you write them down in the order that is there because you will be asked at some point i think on the next screen as well basically that um which order are they in and if you get the order wrong then you it's the same problem you're not you, you know you're not actually going to be able to access it you, you could argue that it's like a really, really, really long password. And that yeah. password is made up of a series of words. Um, uh, and the unique thing about all these words, which you'll learn further down the line at some point, is that the first four letters of every word is unique. Uh, and that just become important at some point. Um, so there will not be, take for example, on this screen, the word hover. Um, there won't be another word that begins H or V E. So it's a pre-approved box of words, this, this particular protocol that everyone uses, all crypto works on, and the first four characters are completely unique. Uh, most sites that ask you to um, create a new wallet, create a new seed, will ask you to confirm it. They'll either ask you to confirm one word out of a group, or they'll ask you to write the whole thing down, uh, to rewrite the whole thing down, which is what Metamask does. Um, so when you're on this page here, you will look at what you've written down, and you will click the buttons according to the speed, to, according to the order at which they're in. I don't know who that was. I hope you're okay. Um, right, so uh, moving on. Uh, Richard Almeida, is it going okay for you on a mobile phone? Pretty similar? Yeah, I've got I've got C3, so sorted and everything. I'm already in. Cool, that's okay. I thought you would be. Like, I know some people are going faster than this, uh, but we want to make sure that we keep everybody with us. So your next screen, once you're in, you should see the little browser extension in the top corner. And when you click it, it should open up. I want to make sure everyone that's doing it is at that point. So you look put in, there yet. Hold on. That's okay. So yeah, so you put in the next screen is to, it, that we got to was write down C phrase. Then you'll go to a, go to a screen whereby you'll have to put in Press the press the uh, the words that are in your seed phrase in the right order. And you do that, and you'll get a screen that says "Congratulations," and it'll say "All done," and it will say "Save a backup in multiple places, never share it." All these different things. Click "All done." It'll have a little pop up that says "Token swapping is here," and you can start swapping, and you'll be able to see MetaMask appear in your browser. Little side note for Richard, I was yeah. um, 
comparing that swap feature the other day when I had to do a lot of stuff. And um, it's very expensive compared to using sites. Doing it in maths and math, yeah. I have a question. Uh, what happens if I don't have any Ethereum in this wallet? Should I, I, I guess I would have to buy some Ethereum first before um, so I can use you, this? You will need to, but let, let's, uh, we'll cover that in a minute because Austin was asking that same question as well. So there's a, we'll talk about that in a second. I just want to make sure we get everyone to this stage uh, where you can click the MetaMask and you'll see probably zero ETH, but it will say zero ETH. Um, uh, and it's got some buttons, and that's it. So for um, Richard Almeida, he'll have that on his phone. He'll see that. For everyone else, if you're on a computer, you'll click the button, and you'll see it come down. Um, if, if someone can raise their hand, if they've not, uh, if they need a little bit more time. Okay, Clive does. It's cool. So I, uh, I got a button that said start swapping, so I think I'm a little past this point. No, you're good. So that that's starts swapping, kind of click OK or close or something. If you're on a computer, you should see in the top right, uh, you should see a little fox in the top right in your extension bar. Mm. Do you see that? No. Uh, do you see a little uh, jigsaw piece? Yeah. Click like the jigsaw piece. And that's going to show you all your extensions and there's a little pin and you'll see MetaMask and the pin will probably be see-through. But if you click it, it turns red. Okay, there we go. Yeah. That's going to, so that's the same for everybody. So the new, the new way that extensions work in Chrome and Brave is by default, it does not pin the extension to your extension bar. So when you click the little jigsaw piece, which is the universal symbol for extensions now, um, it shows them all, and then you can um, pin and unpin them because people have a lot of extensions now, so that, that stops the whole bar being full up. And when you see the little fox and you click it, it should look like that. Okay, so Deborah cool. says uh, she's got the token swapping box. How do you close it? You just click accept or you can just close it that's fine um it is a bit confusing because you can see it in two places you'll be able to see metamask actually inside your browser and as daniel says you'll be also be able to click the metamask extension it'll have a little pop-up on that comes over the top uh which will say account one and at this point it will say zero zero f uh, and the teacher's saying daniel did you say we're not supposed to type in our seed phrase are we supposed to copy and paste it from somewhere? Um, yeah, so so I think this is just this, that there there will always be a there there can easily be a time when at some point you have to put your seed phrase in. So in this instance, uh, you would type it in. I think it, what, what I'm referring to there is um, is storing it. Hang on, no, no. If I know you don't type it in, you're clicking buttons. So when you're on this page, Leticia, you're not typing. So we should have it. Think you, you would you would write it down on a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying um, I already had a, a pre-existing seed phrase that I typed in, and it accepted it, but I, I did type it in. Yeah. So uh, again, okay. So then, what what, what I'm referring to here, uh, and on the last call we, we talked a lot about something that's quite technical, and it's it's a trade-off when we're looking at risk of of understanding what's going on but not stopping yourself doing something. So if, you, if you're on a computer that's full of malware and spamware and it's not clean, or all of these things, it's, it's possible to have key logging software on your computer that's coming through some piece of thing you've downloaded. And that means that everything you're typing is being recorded. So if you're typing a seed phrase on a computer, that's, um, that could be, that information could be taken somewhere, yeah? So that's why we say, to try not to type it into something because you can't mitigate against everything. However, uh, you already had it somewhere on your computer. You've typed it in like it's it, it, it's done. And for the most part, 99% of all people will be fine. But it's just understanding that this stuff does exist. So it's that's why within crypto, like it's a very technical thing in a way. 
uh, and meaning it's very geeky, very techy. And there's a lot of people knowing that they can take crypto. So uh, are you on a Mac or a PC? It's a PC. It's a PC. And uh, is it new or old? It's pretty new, I guess, two years old. Is it, is it up to date? Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. Good. Okay, so th these are the first things to look for. Is like, uh, you know, is it Mac or is it PC? Because I just changed how much stuff can go on it quickly. Is it up to date in like the latest security settings, things like that? Um, if you said it's eight years old and it's a PC and it's not up to date, that's a big red flag. Yeah. So it's, it's not one rule that fits all, but, but we try and start with the strongest rule, which is try not to type your seed phrase anywhere because it just mitigates um, somebody key logging that information. Okay. Angelita says, if I accepted the seed phrase here, can I change it or is it fixed? It's fixed. Your seed phrase is the DNA for that seed. If you give me your seed phrase in four years and I put your seed phrase in, I grow the exact same tree that you have and with the exact same addresses and, and they have whatever coins the blockchain says that they have. So it is very much um, a fixed thing. It's important as well to say, actually, that it seems confusing, but as you say, that seed phrase is, is to access that wallet and it's not protected by the password either because if I go to a new browser and put uh, in and download a new version of MetaMask or just put, you know, import your seed phrase, I can create my own password for, for that wallet. It's not, it's not in, in MetaMask, it's not protected by the password either. The password you've just put in, if you, you know, if you, if you put coins into, into this MetaMask now and then your laptop dies, as long as you've got that seed phrase, you can then go to another computer, input that seed phrase, and you can create a brand new password, and you'll still be able to access the same wallet. So, um, so that yeah, yeah think, that's think, think of them as universally different. Your, your seed phrase is the seed. The password is just Met MetaMask have said, hey, we're going to include a password in our extension. This is totally unrelated to the seed. Okay, so uh, Clive, you are you installed? Are you at this space here? Uh, yeah, well, I don't have any ether, but uh, yeah. I'm... Awesome. <coughs> That's cool. As long as you're at that space, that is okay. Um, I'm just wondering if it's worth just mentioning, actually, um, about the accounts and just being familiarising with that as well. Do you, do you mean um, this, Richard, if you're looking at my screen? Do you mean when you're going into here? Yeah, exactly that, yeah. Uh, I, I think that's going to complicate yeah. things a little bit. Um, they're, they're, they're really, like MetaMask is really simple, but also so easy. Like me and Richard have lost coins in brackets only to find them the next day because we clicked a different button. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to show it you, but at the same time, Don't not complicate things. But, but I suppose in short, you can have different accounts, just like you can have different Google accounts. And you could easily not realize that you've made another account. Oh, it's not, I'll just do it. If I click create account, I'm going to just call this test account. I'm going to say create. Um, I could easily you be logged off. in. <laughs> uh, it's cool. That? Did someone have, someone have a few problems? Anyone's having any problems there? Jerry, I'm just going to mute you in case that was you. Uh, but I hope so. So, so I, if... Uh, what am, I'm going. I'm gonna, go on. I was just going to say, I managed to change it now, the language and everything. I had to log into the phone uh, and then do it on the... on then Join my app's existing wallet and then change the language in. No worries, awesome. I'm glad you got sorted yeah. on that. Yeah, it's a big app problem elsewhere as well. Cool. Okay, cool. So then um, you can have different accounts in here, and that's why all of a sudden, let's say that this account here had one ETH. Next second, it could show that. That's because I have two accounts. So it's just being aware of not clicking. You click create account, 
then in this corner here, you could easily have multiple accounts. Uh, right, so I'm going to start my first one here, and we're just going to move along to adding fonts. So the, where this came from is um, a quick message from Ben. What legacy phrase do you say? Let's do that. Uh, yeah, Ben. So that's where you would put your seed phrase. You would you would type it in uh, into that space. But but I think you'll have a twenty four word seed phrase. Uh, just correct me. Uh, unmute yourself, Ben. Have you got a twenty four word seed phrase or twelve? Um, I think Ledger is twenty four. I think you're right. So I don't know. Um, I imagine you just import it because it's just literally a copy and paste box when you click next. So you'll know by, if you've got, do you have some ERC20 tokens in your seed? Uh, in my ledger, I think I have a little bit of ETH, yeah. Perfect. So you, you look, there's no, there's no way of finding this stuff out real until you start playing with it. So you put your 24 word seed phrase in, bring it in, and you'll know straight away. If that ETH shows your balance, then it's, it's, uh, that, then that works. Okay. But by default, MetaMask gives out 12, um, uh, 12 word seed phrases. Right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, okay, so um, uh, let's just get into why. Um, uh, so you can't buy coins with MetaMask, you send coins. So for the people that have got Ether, you would send your coins to Ether. So how would you do that? When MetaMask is open, this is your address here. So if I click this once, it's now copied to my address board. Um, I would go to wherever my ether is. So let's say it's in crypto.com. I click send. I would paste that address and I would say how much I'm sending and then I would approve that transaction. Um, an easy way if you're looking at this on a computer and you're using um, and you're using crypto.com is I should be able to click account details. And there is your QR code. So when you're on crypto.com on your phone and you're clicking the um, and you're clicking the address button, there's a camera button. If you scan that, you'll be able to send Ether. Anyone wishes to send me some Ether as a test, uh, you can use my QR code, but I would advise you to use your own QR code. Do, we, uh, ha, ha, ha. Do we have to send Ethereum or can we send other cryptos? Okay, you can send anything that's ERC20, which basically means a coin that's built on Ethereum. Um, but MetaMask uses Ethereum as its gas fees to do everything. So if you send USDT, which is an ERC20 token, you will not be able to swap that USD for anything. So as soon as you try to swap it, it's going to say you need ETH to pay for this. So it's, it's a common problem is people will send a lot of coins. I've had Ethereum wallets with, uh, sorry, MetaMask wallets with coins in them. And when you run out of Ether, it's, it's literally like running out of gas. There's no more gas to make transactions. And I can't, I can't sell one of my coins to make Ether because I need Ether to sell the coin into Ether. So I have to find some money externally, some Ether externally and send it. So I would always recommend first sending some Ether because it's, that, that's how MetaMask works. Now, okay. The, uh, remember yeah, we talked wanna, about that. Yeah, I want to talk about fees. So this is where fees comes into it. So as, yeah, Ger as Jerry just yeah. said, even the simplest task, even the simplest task, can cost twenty dollars in gas. So for, we are showing you how to use MetaMask because it's good to just understand it. But just understand that Ethereum. Uh, what did someone call Ethereum the other day? It's like a word that basically meant like. It's something negative. I can't even think what it is. Um, but Ethereum really does cost a lot of money. It's one of the biggest problems yeah. Ethereum is going through right now, and it's trying to solve it. So um, it was Austin a while ago. Austin had some Nexus coins, and he wanted to sell, like, I don't know, $60 worth. Uh, but he would have paid $30 in fees just to sell it. So there really becomes a question right now that you may choose to stop at this point you might not send some Ethereum to it. Because if you're going to send $20 worth of Ethereum to it, um, you're not going to be able to do anything with that. 
you're not even going to be able to trade it because even if you said, hey, I'll swap my $20 Ethereum for, I don't know, for, um, I can't think of the coin to create, uh, for DAI, you're going to spend $20 doing that or you might spend $15 and you'll get $5 worth. So this whole thing that brought this up, which is about airdrops, uh, we said to, to really do it, you're going to need about $100 because $100 worth of Ethereum, you pretty much would be able to move $100 uh, four times, maybe at best three times, and you're going to spend $100 doing that. So if, if that's not worth it to you, then do not, don't, don't even begin to even look at this because it's just one of these things. You can sink money really, really, really fast. And I had a message from someone today who <clears throat> I had a message from someone today who'd made $1,000. And then by the time they were exiting, they only came out with 700 and that's because of fees. And so it's this whole awareness of fees is really, really big. You cannot get away from it with Ethereum. That's how it works. And MetaMask is predominantly an Ethereum-based um, browser extension. So just understand that. Um, Jerry says, I was locking up a stake the other day, but declined it when they wanted 175 in fees. I know. I've seen, I've seen, what was someone the other day, a $3,000 fee? Something like that. It peaked at one point. Um, the reason people use Ethereum is it is decentralized. That means that when you're using MetaMask, no one knows who you are. You're completely anonymous. You, you're, you're not putting your, your coins on, a, on an exchange. There's no risk of hack. There's no risk of loss. But there are other risks. You could, you could interact with a contract that's not correct if you're not clicking the right buttons and lose your money. So you've got to be, follow some simple rules to find the right coins that you want to trade into. Um, but the trade-off for that is cost. Um, there is cost to it. So I want to, so this is, if you were to add funds to it, that's where you would find it. You would click your MetaMask, you click this button here, copy to clipboard, and then you would send to it. That is my MetaMask address. It is the same address for every coin. Every coin uses the same address. The only difference is, is that we would, um, it, MetaMask knows what the coin is. A little bit like um, you have an address for your house and whether I'm sending a parcel, uh, a letter, uh, a large letter, a jiffy bag, a courier, they all go to your house, but they arrive as different parcels. If I had them all laid out in your, in your kitchen, all the letters are stacked together, all the medium parcels are together, like the postman knows what's what. Uh, Andy has to go, um, no worries, Andy, take care. Thank you for joining us, honey. Uh, go on, Tisha. Okay. So let's say I do want to send, because the whole point of this was, I think you mentioned that, I guess this company called MetaMask, they're going to be doing a token drop and that may be uh, worth something someday. They, they, so, they might they might do a token drop. There is talk of it. And, it. and if I'm honest, it wouldn't surprise me if they choose to do an airdrop. But I just want to be really clear. There are no guarantees of anything. Okay. So... Would they do a to like a token drop to any of us who even have any Ethereum here, or do or do we have to buy some other token that's available there? The the general rule of thumb, if there even is a rule of thumb, is it, like if you if you've had um, over a hundred dollars worth of something in uh, in your MetaMask, I don't think it would be a trade, but it could be a trade. But I think if you've opened a MetaMask wallet. And you funded that wallet with $100 with Ethereum. If that's all you did, you're probably in the upper ends of, of, of qualifying for an airdrop. Like, um, and if you just want to do that with one wallet one time and leave the Ethereum there, that's cool. At least you have, you have a chance of getting an airdrop if it comes. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, all we Richie, have to do. How do, I, do I click on buy then? Do I click on buy or how do I move? Oh. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy. I would directly deposit Ether. This one here. Oh. This buy. Oh. This buy one here is using a third provider called Wire. So, do you already own Ethereum somewhere else, Letitia? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So then, go to that space where that is. Copy this address oh. first. Go Would to wherever you're. Um, so when you click on your fox, it's there. 
I, I click on my box. Oh, copy to clipboard. Uh, what it says, account one? Yep. Oh, copy to clipboard. Okay, got it. Copy. Okay. Go, go to wherever right. your Ethereum is. Got it, got it, got it. And, and then I can just send, send it to it. there. Okay, got it. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll have to remember. Is it, <laughs> you don't have to remember the address. You can get it at any time. So for any people that have sent it, uh, let's just have a C. Is anyone, uh, a lot of cameras are off anyway, but if anyone's, um, just do us a thumbs up on the um, Zoom if you are sending some Ethereum to your account. Yeah. I, will, I will be doing, I just, I don't, I don't know how to do it off Binance. I've, I've got mine in Binance at the moment. So are you using Binance on a browser or yeah. on your phone? I've, I've got both options. So when you're in um, when you're in Binance, uh, do you know how to access your fiat and spot wallet? I'm in the fiat. That's what I'm in now. I can see I can see my Ethereum total um, and what's available, and it's got I've got options of buy, deposit, withdraw, trade, earn, and convert. So so click click withdraw. Right. Okay. Recipient's ether address, I'm guessing, is that then, yeah? Yeah. And then when you put that in there, it might even say, once you put the address in, it might say, how do you want to send it? And you'll have one of the options will be ERC20. Transfer network. It's yeah, got, and it's got a Ethereum. few options there. Yeah, it's got Ethereum, yeah, ERC20. Uh, yeah, it's got, it's got the cheapest. Uh, don't, don't do the cheaper, just, just you can only do ERC20. Yeah. All right, okay. Well, it works out anyway. Okay, minimum withdrawal. Max. And submit it. Okay. Uh, ben asks, can we send Ethereum Classic instead of Ethereum? Um, do, sorry, are you, uh, let's have a look now. Uh, this is to answer Letitia's question of how do you... Um, how do you, well, we're talking about adding coins. So I'm just going to go to Ethereum Classic. Ethereum. Ethereum. What's the ticker for Ethereum Classic? ETC. Yeah, ETC. Oh, I right, see so UM, that's why Ethereum Classic. Uh, So normally it would say add to MetaMask. Give me a second. Richard, can you find the contract address for... Um... Wait a four, sorry. Ethereum Classic contract address. Um, that will be because I can't even see. It. There's not even a Uniswap pairing on here, so I'm wondering if it's uh, not a MetaMask. Ethereum Classic. If it's not ERC twenty. Um, oh, it's not going to be ERC twenty because it's it's its own blockchain. Yeah. Oh, I missed that for helping. Um, is, is someone got classic? Yeah, uh, look at the chat. Ben's asked, can he send it to you in classic? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Ah, here we go. One for a minute. Um, you can, Ben, I'm just going to send you this. Basically, it's on a different network. I didn't want to get into this on this call. Uh, but there are, as you can see here, different ways that you can use MetaMask. But for everyone on this call, just as just Ethereum men, that you would never change this, but Ben may choose to. Would that mean you qualify for an airdrop? Mm -hmm. No idea. But if it is sat there doing nothing, hey, you might as well um, throw it onto here. 
but you may also still choose to put some Ethereum on it. So Ben, I hope that answers your, your question. And that's why we can't find a contract address for it. So for the people that are still with us for doing this, uh, you should reach a stage where your Ethereum arrives. And when you click on your Fox, you'll see an Ethereum amount there. Uh, Leticia, did you manage to send it okay? It's okay. Um, oh, I'm getting direct messages on my phone. Sorry, one second. I just realized. Uh, I'm saying, so, I was just saying, Daniel, that it's been a while since I sent. I don't remember how to send from this exchange. Um, I click on wallets, I guess, and and then. Well, when you're so when I, you're sending it. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're, if you're on your exchange, click on wallets, find Ethereum, and there'll be a withdraw or it might say transfer or uh, send. Oh, transfer. Send. Oh, sorry. Well, whilst you're looking for that, Clive, uh, I've got oh, a question for Clive and one for Patricia. Okay, I got it. You work on that, Leticia. I'm just going to meet for a second. Uh, so Clive says, can you send it and remove it at no cost? Pretty much, if it includes the word Ethereum, you would never include the word no cost. As a, I'm gonna, I, there's one exception to that that I'm aware of, and that is Celsius, who absorb all fees. Um, and that's the only site that I'm aware of that do that. They only absorb fees to send it, that's it. So you, no, you cannot send Ethereum to MetaMask and remove it at no cost. Every time you want to do anything with Ethereum, you will pay a gas fee. And a gas fee will range from $15, uh, like five to $15 to just send Ethereum. So the other day I was noticing that if I'm just sending Ethereum from A to B, I can do that for as cheap as $6. Uh, but the minute I want to start swapping and doing stuff, I mean, I saw fees the other day for $60, $70 just to do a swap, um, which if you're doing a swap on 100 bucks, oh, you just wouldn't do it. Um, so no, the, the, doing this now, you, like sending some money into here, you be, you're basically taking a punch. You're like, am I happy to spend 20 bucks to move $100 of Ethereum into a wallet? And I might get an airdrop in the future. Angelique says, not going to do it now, but in CDC, when I go to withdraw to four options, including an external wallet, is that the one I choose? Yes. So when you click external wallet, it will ask for an address and you'll add the address it will then send you an email to say, to ensure it, like you, someone tried to add a withdrawal address, you'll approve it. And then once it's approved, you'll be able to use it. So yeah, an, an external wallet's what you're looking for. Uh, Trisha says, I started on my phone, I switched to my computer, but I'm lost now. So really quickly, Trisha, um, uh, just unmute yourself and just tell us where you are at. Okay, so um, I, um, one moment here, okay multitasking here. <laughs> okay. okay. So, um, so I'm on my computer and I'm on my phone. So I started on my phone and then I saw your screen and then I was like, Oh, that's a different screen that you have than I have on my, on my phone. So then I figured, Oh, I better switch to my computer. So I have your same screen, but I can't get there. <laughs> so I'm not sure where I am. Okay. So have you downloaded the MetaMask browser on your computer? Um, no, I, well, I did it in Brave Browser. I have Brave Browser, and so... That's okay. Um, Brave, Brave's good. So just type, type into Brave, MetaMask extension. I'm on Brave right now. Okay, so right now, oh, see, so you know what it says, though? It says MetaMask, and then at the top in my, brow, in my um, browser, it says Chrome extension, but that's not what I want. Yeah, no, the, the Met, Brave is built on Chrome. So the whole Chrome web store mm, is, right. is, okay. is Brave. It's the same. Yeah, it's the same oh, thing. So, okay. Okay. So if you look at my screen, you've probably got something okay. like this. One second. I'm going to look on your screen. Sorry. Um, oh, good grief. One second here. You're other way. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's going to work for me. Now it works. Oh, okay. Was, oh it's super, super tiny. You, you're, your other way is you go straight to metamask.io and click download. Sorry, what, could you say that one more time? I didn't understand. Go to metamask.io 
and you and the the correct way would always be to go to the source of the program and click download then you absolutely know you are downloading the official version of something okay i did that and i already put all my stuff in here so i should just start all over again but, well you've already done that on your on your computer on my computer yeah and on my phone i've done both okay if you've done it on your computer then look look at my screen do you see your extension yeah. bar at the top um, no, it look, just says it's it's on an e, uh, the the Ethereum um, buy send and swap assets activity. It says add token. Oh, so you, you've you've got MetaMask. You're you're in. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I just the the part that I was stuck on is actually doing the transfer. Like I have Ethereum, but I have it in uh, Bybit. Right. Okay. Cool. So click your fox, and at the top it will say account one. Yeah. Okay, the fox. I click the fox. Uh -uh, it's not doing nothing on the, the, fox. the fox is the picture of the icon that's in the extension bar. That's the, the okay. Fox so account one. Yes, account uh, account one. Yeah. And when you click that, it'll say copy to clipboard, and it'll say copy. Copy to clipboard. It doesn't say that. Look at my screen. Okay. Okay. Is that like on like? Hmm. So did you, yours will say account one there, yeah? Um, yeah, it, well, it so says just, my accounts and it says account one and then I click on it, it just come, it brings me straight back to the Ethereum buy, send and swap. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Cool? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that, cool. that's, yeah. That, that's in your clipboard now. If you go yeah. to buy bit, you find your Ethereum and you click withdraw, it will say, where do you want to withdraw it to? And you will paste that address in there. Okay, so my buy bit yeah, in here. Okay, so here we are. Um, so whilst you're just doing that, I'm just gonna answer some of the questions in here. Absolutely. Um, okay, so uh, Leticia's saying, she's trying to transfer basically uh, 0 0.1 ETH and it will show 0 0.075. Um, that's probably not, an. we talked about this, I think on the last call, that's not an exchange fee. That is a network fee, more than likely. Uh, if there is, a next, if there is an, ex, uh, an exchange fee, it will say exchange fee or fee, and it'll give a figure. And then there's network fee. They usually show you the network fee because they, they, they want you to know it's not them. So again, that's just... Um, that's just how expensive Ethereum is. I think I would say that 0 0.075 sounds about right, really. Um, 0 0.075 beneath, that would work out. Uh, let's have a look. Ethereum, 0 0.075. 0 0.075. 135 bucks. Does sound hard, are you sure it's not 0 0.0075? I was paying about 10 to $13 yesterday. So I just double check that. Uh, let's see, she says no. You can unmute yourself, the teacher. No, I'm, uh, I'm sure I could even send a picture of the screen and show you. I don't know if Zoom allows me to do that. It's so expensive. So I, I mean, it's insane. So, so what you told me before is, you know, I could transfer to XRP, transfer the XRP. Maybe, maybe it's a combination. Yeah. So you. Yeah, you, 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 you wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to do the XRP thing because no, if no, you transferred it. No. Yeah. Okay. Because that MetaMask won't receive XRP. Um, mm -hmm. it, the, no matter what you want to do, if you want to get funds into MetaMask, you will pay because MetaMask is an Ethereum-based product. Um, yeah. But not point not seven five. Right now, if we look at gas fees, it does seem a lot. If gas fees. No, it seems like it's, I just did the math. It's coming to like 100 out of like 230 or something that I have in Canadian. It's eating up, what is it? No, I have 215 Canadian dollars. And I figure it's like 0 0.75. It's about like. It, it, it's it's insane. It's the majority of that money is going to feed. So I don't feel comfortable doing this. I don't know. It's, it's that, that, be that's way. totally cool. There's this is the highs way. and lows of it. There, is, honestly, the t-shirt. There is no other way. 
the, the only the only other way you could do it for people that really want to put some money in there would be to use something like uh, Changely. So Sorry. Look at this now, you could use something like Changely, where you are uh, buying some. Let's buy 120 USD into Ethereum. There you go. So you could you could make a fresh purchase of Ethereum, and when you make that purchase, it will go straight to um, you can send it straight to that address. So if we use something called Simple Swap, oh, okay. And this is a, this is a nice easy way to um, let's do a hundred um, USD. I'm just working in dollars. You can do whatever currency you want. Sure. And I'm just going to show you what you would get. So pretty much, if I spend $100 on this platform, I'm going to get $96 worth of it. So that's a 4% fee, but it's better than whatever you were paying somewhere else. So Simple Swap allows you to have something on the left here and allows you to receive something on the right. So I would take my MetaMask address here and I would paste it here, I've made sure this says Ethereum. And I'm going to go on fixed rate. Fixed we we don't see rate. The, Daniel, are you sharing your screen? Yeah. Uh, oh, shoot. Sorry. Uh, simple swap.io. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Let's make that right. I click exchange. Set the terms, go to exchange page. And it's got, basically on the next page, I might have to like put my bank details in, I might have to provide an email address, but it's going to charge me $100 and I'm going to get 0 0.05 ETH and it will send it to that address. And this is the rate it's giving me. That's the rate of one ETH to USD. So that's an, if you wanted to load up your MetaMask wallet and you didn't want to send it from somewhere and pay a heavy fee, then you'd have to use fresh fiat. That's the only other way to, to bypass paying a heavy fee. Got it. So I'm just wondering, you know, Daniel, in the future, let's say hopefully our Ethereum goes up in value, will the fees keep being like so proportionally high or what do you think? Uh, unless Ethereum changes its model onto something called proof of stake, they're only going to get more expensive. This is one. This is why people think something will replace Ethereum, such as Polkadot, such as Cardano, because they've solved this problem. But there is Ethereum 2.0 coming, and it's been coming for a long time. Apparently, it's going to be here in a couple of months. But anything happens in crypto. I do just want to say something that uh, Rich has pointed out. So Kerry, his partner, he's on the call as well. She just transferred from Crypto.com. And she paid 0.01, which is $18. So that sounds, which is why I thought yours was 0.0075. So it could very well be that your site is charging you a lot more, Richard. Yeah. I think it's just worth double checking that, because um, Carrie got confused as well. She said, well, mine says 0.7. I was like, what? <laughs> so I went and have a look, but it is confusing on the screen, the, the confirmation screen. Um, you know, the way it sort of categorizes the fee and then what you'll what'll actually be, be deposited. So yeah. it, it does sound crazy high that, I've got to be honest, yeah. you know, to say for the amount you're going to, you know, receive. No, no, I'll show you. Yeah. Okay. I'll take a picture and show you guys. So I'll show you, hey, I'll post it. That's so crazy. Um. Okay. So, so I'm trying to figure out how to... um. How to buy Ethereum on that site with my card, Daniel? Uh, you, just, you, just, to... you just follow through everything. Once I agree, if you look at my page, once I agree with terms and conditions, I can buy. And it'll just be a standard. It's going to ask you a series of information. I don't know how much KYC it will need to do. It might need your passport. You might need to register with them. Whenever you use something for the first time, so this looks like Simple Swap works with a site called Mercuro. So that would say to me that that's their payment gateway. Um, and you might have to register with them. 
but then once you've registered once and you've provided your information of who you are, because they all have to do KYC and AML, anti-money laundering. KYC is know your customer. Um, you'll only have to do it once. Because uh, oh. I'm conscious of time, uh, Letitia, as well. So I'm happy to kind of yeah. um, uh, help out with That's this okay. a little bit more. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, and Trisha, no worries. If you've got to get off, that is cool. Uh, would you try and keep things on pretty much on a, on a time? But I want to make sure I'm just seeing this through to the end. If anybody needs to leave, because uh, we're, we're at an hour and a half, that is totally cool. But I do want to make sure that if anyone's in the process, that we can at least just make sure you get to the, get to the end of it. Um, so Letitia, just keep going through that process of simple. So that's the only other way you're going to, um, if you haven't got Ethereum somewhere else, um, then that's your only other option. But I would just say, just screenshot that page from the site you're using. I would like to verify that it is 0.075 because that, that... It's, it's, that's so much, uh, I, I don't know how to attach. I don't know if I can attach a picture, but I'll send it to you. Yeah. Just take it if, so, you, if you, if you want, is it on your phone or on your laptop? Uh, I can post it in Telegram. Uh, post it in Telegram, put it in the public group if you want, or send it to me privately. I'd love to just see it. I want to see how it's laid yeah. out. Uh, I just sent it to you. But I'm only going to receive I sent it in Telegram. You have sent it in Telegram? Yeah. It's telling me that so it's, gonna, it's ridiculous. Which, frankly. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, okay. What, what I'm just going to stop. It's a Canadian exchange. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to probably just transfer everything to XRP, move that XRP somewhere else, like you told me, and then maybe yeah. go and buy on a different exchange, go and trade my XRP for yeah. some. some I, I, I would recommend that. Like, it's really important. It's a little bit like when you're, when you're in business, it's good to have around you like power teams and power advisors. And when you're in crypto, you want to work on exchanges that you understand that are equal to the level of technical ability you've got and that are treating you well. And treating you well really is customer care and is fees. Um, so I can yeah. definitely say that, that crypto.com is a fairly okay one in the world of, of okay. simplicity, of retailability, of understanding, of good enough customer care and fees. So um, maybe transfer it to XRP, send it yeah. to crypto.com in XRP, and then transfer it back out. I'm um, ready to on Binance. I'm going to try that. Okay. Binance is also good as well, yeah. Um, so, um, and just for Jerry, uh, Jerry, I, I no longer recommend Atomic. I was on Atomic the other day, and the fees to send from Atomic were ridiculous. I couldn't, I couldn't actually believe that they were charging them. And um, really? <clears throat> there's nothing I could do. So I, I do not recommend Atomic at the minute. Um, I haven't seen wow. what it's like to exit out of Exodus. Um, uh, Deb says, now that I've met him, is there any advantage in using it to manage funds in other wallets? I think you said at the start that that was a way of possibility. Uh, there is, but I would not. MetaMask is a hot wallet. In fact, it, and I would say it's, it's a browser hot wallet. Um, yeah. And I would not consider MetaMask a place I want to keep my funds. Really, uh, it, it's perfectly fine, but it, but it's not. There's better places. If you're looking at a place to manage funds, I wouldn't do MetaMask because, as well, MetaMask is only for ERC twenty based tokens. You're not really going to manage Bitcoin on there, Cardano, Polkadot, Zilliqa, Zcash. There's tons of stuff that's not Ethereum based. So um, it's really just a place to be able to buy, in a way, obscure exotic coins. Um, but it's not something that is, I would recommend for most people anyway. Uh, Jerry's right, use MetaMask for functionality connected to web-based platforms. So that's when we were talking about Web 3.0. MetaMask is really good as a, it's like having a, let's call it a bank account, it's kind of sat there and you can, you can land on a page and you can just start using it. It's very fluid. Um, Okay, cool. So this page here <clears throat> is for when you're sending something, you just click send, you would paste an address before you're sending it to, and then the fees would come up. This is where I've seen on average, I'm paying anywhere from like, richest. I mean, these screenshots are fairly 
recent. I'm paying it anywhere from like $8 to $15. Uh, when you're swapping a token, it can get pretty extortionate. Uh, but you can just send and you can receive. Uh, let's move on to this. This is the, anyone who's looking at the screen, this is the standard page where it will show you uh, what the fees are before you click confirm. So I'm, I'm not going to spend any time on that. If you do send something, it will come up with this page here. We've got slow, average, fast. I use average for most things unless I absolutely need it quickly. I never use slow. Slow really can take uh, a long time. So it's just good to just know that average or fast, really. You confirm it onto here. Um, we're going to totally leave adding custom tokens for now. Um, I want to make sure that for those who are following along with this, that you, unless you're doing something different, like Letitia's looking at Simple Swap. Uh, Mai, how did you get on? Um, well, I, don't I, don't have any, uh, I don't have any Ethereum, so. Um, okay, so you're not sending any anything. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just following along. Considering if I wanna, if I wanna end it, it's, it seems pricey with the fees, but I see that it's uh, yeah, it's it's sort of like a gamble, right? If if you're hoping to get the what was it called again? Airdrop. The airdrop, yes. Yeah. So the, like person, I said, the, the easiest way if you were to do it, like if you really wanted to, is I'd use something like Simple Swap. Simple You'll pay swap, yes. a couple of percent. Um, go on. What was your question? Um, you were using before you went to the simple swap, it was like Changely something. Ch Changely is a another another gateway that will just charge your card and send it somewhere. Uh, and if we look at what Changely would be, if I spend a hundred dollars, I don't want to move that to so it's a competitor to the simple swap, yeah. But like, look at the difference here is that. Um, if I spend hundred dollars, I'm going to get seventy-five dollars back. Yes, with better, if I use with if I use simple swap, there. if I spend hundred dollars, um, I'm looking to get uh, ninety odds. I think it was USD. So that that means that the, it would appear, and these things change over time. It would appear that on this site, I'll get a much better rate right, right. than if I use this site. So that, that's all I was showing you. So, but sites like this make buying crypto really easy. They just charge you a fee and you, you just tell it where you want the money to go. So I could put your address in here and I could buy you $100. It doesn't have to be anyone's address. So it's just a simple way. But not everyone is sat on money to bring back in. So some people have got a load of money in crypto. And if you already have money in crypto, then you might move it. Out of all right. Cool. Okay. okay. Uh, I hope that helps my anyway. If you're yeah, thinking sure. about it, like look at those sizes sure. as well. Uh, Mary, you've got your hand up. Um, is there any tokens that you would recommend swapping in MetaMax? Uh, you mean you mean swapping your Ethereum for something yeah. else? Yeah. Um, I know this is not financial advice. Yeah, I know, and, and it's such a big question that there are because there's some really good talks but there like depends how speculative you want to be how fast you want to move um it's just a, a lot to it could i even give you one no. now the, the <laughs> thing no not really the thing is as well uh mary is that i'd probably use a different browser to buy them anyway okay uh, you, you, uh, uniswap's a good long-term one but uh -huh. It, this is such a big question. I'm sorry, I can't just give you an answer. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll post in the group like some of the ERC20 tokens that I like. Um, but I couldn't even... The only one off the top of my head that I think long-term will actually do quite well is probably Uniswap. Okay. Um, but again, that could change tomorrow. So... It, no worries. Unless I know where you're at with things, I can't, I can't answer that question because it would be, I could give you advice and in six months it could be tanked and you think it's a long-term hold and it wasn't. So Sorry. just just leaving the money in, in so my Ethereum's arrived now and that's all I need to do. You yeah, know, if you want a shot at receiving that airdrop, yeah. having a MetaMask with 100 bucks of worth of something in it um, is... is, is a way higher chance that if they say, hey, we're going to do an airdrop, 
that might be one of the things that they uh, a main factor that they look at for who gets that air drop. Okay, cool. Thank um, you. They could so, say it's two hundred, and you're like, oh damn it, I only put a hundred in. And this is yeah. the we are gambling and playing, but at yeah. least it's not that money's still yours. It's not gone anywhere. You're just ticking a few boxes to hopefully be in for a uh, a chance if they do mm -hmm. do an air drop. Okay. Cool. Okay, I'm acutely aware of time. Are there any real last minute sort of questions that people are uh, confused with or need any anything? I want to try and make sure you all kind of got a bit of wallet. If you've sent some money to it, I hope it's right. Ben raised his hand. Yeah, so I think you just kind of answered it. I was asking why a hundred dollars is is it worth transferring more if if the fee is so high? Would it be worth transferring? You know, more than a hundred dollars. I think you just answered it. We're just guessing at this point how much we need in there. Yeah, if you're only doing this to to hedge your bets at having a good stab at the airdrop, because that's the only sole purpose doing it, then a hundred dollars seems to be the uh, what's been used in the past yeah uh, if you're also interested in playing around with metamask in um swapping some coins out and buying some obscure coins that might do really really well then you would send whatever you're willing to invest if i was if i was willing to invest a thousand dollars worth of something and play around with a few coins i'd send a thousand dollars worth of ethereum in, in one go and then from that thousand dollars of ethereum i'd swap 250 into this, 250 into that, 500 into this, and I'd leave 250, and they'd all sat, sit in that MetaMask wallet. So you, you want to send to MetaMask the amount of money you're, you're willing to play with. And if all you're willing to play with is 100 bucks just to tick the box, then just send that and it's done. Keep a record of it, make sure you can get access to it, and kind of set and forget it, but just know that it's always there. Uh, and that hundred figure is semi arbitrary, it's just based on historic criteria that other companies have used. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, Matt. Richard, do you have anything you want to just kind of throw in at this point? I feel I've been talking for ages. No, it's cool. It's um, it's it feels um super complex. It feels expensive, and it is both those things. But I think. <laughs> I think what you have to remember is that you're in the top, having having gone through that process, you're in the top 0.001% of people that have made that step. And as Jerry points out there in, in the chat, he's saying, you know, it now it's the, for me, it's, just, it's now created a stepping stone. So you can start carefully exploring what this can do for you. At the very least, if you did spend, you know, 20 to 30, potentially $50 going through this process and, um, and and you end up with an airdrop, it's been worth your time doing this and it's been worth that, you know, money money invested. Um, I think we said before that, you know, the Uniswap one was a rumour and it just dropped really quickly. Um, and if you've done a, if, you, if you've done a transaction by Uniswap, you'd be sitting on, and you'd kept those tokens, it'd be worth $12,000 today. So, that's the potential of the what, what's going on here, and MetaMask is, is massively widely used. So the chances of it happening are, are, are so. So you do have to go through this pain and difficulty and nervousness and, and expense at the end of the day. But it's giving you access. It's just a stepping stone, but it's giving you access to a wider world of crypto, and it's a good step to take. So it's been quite laborious in some ways trying to do this the way we have been doing it and it's trying to break new ground in terms of what we're doing because it's always been just sort of talking about different things in crypto up till now but this is the first time i've actually tried to take you through some practical steps so i appreciate everyone sticking with it and um and getting to this point but i, I believe it's a worthwhile investment for you yeah i, I would agree with that and it's, imagine like walking up a staircase that's in a cave and you get halfway up the staircase and a few of the steps are missing it, that crypto is a bit like that. Like to begin with, you can sign on to exchanges and once you put a bit of money in, it's fine. But then all of a sudden, there's this massive, as soon as you want to work on something called a DEX, a decentralized exchange, it's just a bit more complex. And that there isn't a baby step. There's, there's, you're in the cave and all of a sudden you get to a point and there's two or three steps missing and it feels like a big climb and it is a big climb. But uh, some of the coins that are thrown around sometimes in that group, um, 
are, are you need access to these DEXs, decentralized exchanges, to find them because they're just not listed anywhere else. And just like Jerry said, some of these can t- literally 40x, 100x, can do really, really well. And it, and it does feel like gambling. And it does feel like you're pissing away money with it, with fees and everything. But you only need one to do well, and it can do really, really well. You only need one airdrop. Those Uniswap tokens could be easily be worth 20, 30, 40 grand on the next cycle. They could easily as well not be there. Like There is a whole, it's a very speculative market. But once you reach a stage where you're comfortable on exchanges, having access to MetaMask is a massive tool, a massive asset. And, and many have never made that job. So we wanted people in FLT to at least be able to, because some of these opportunities you just won't get unless you've got that wallet. So if at least you've got it, got $100 in, that's all you've done. Brilliant. That's, that's really, really good. Uh, and to just answer Clive's question, I mean, Rich has already answered it there, Ryan, GVP. These simple swap sites, you can charge your card in whatever fee you want. So if I go to simple swap, and I change this to GPP. There we go. And if I want Tether, I'll get 133. And if I want Ethereum, I'm going to get 0.074. So they're very simple sites for these. And they can be very useful, um, especially if you don't want to use an exchange. It's just good. To, again, they're good to have in your toolbox of things within crypto. There's no one magic red pill that does everything. Um, sovereign finance in this decentralized world has no main player. Just as some players that are good at a lot of things, but then aren't good at some other things like crypto.com. So everything has a part to play. Just seeing that is, is one step. Um, you don't have to understand everything all at once. There's, a, there's a, a whole section to get good with before you move on. And Metamask is definitely one of those. Uh, ben successfully transferred some ETH from Exodus to my new Metamask. Excellent. Cost $10. Yeah, regardless of how much I sent. So that's a really good point. Um, Ethereum network fees are fixed for that moment. It's not percentage based. You send a billion dollars, you'll pay $10. You send $10, you'll pay $10. Uh, I'm now eager to find out how to use Polkadot, Uniswap, or one inch. Uh, log on to Uniswap, and you'll see it picks up your MetaMask wallet. And just start playing around. But as, um, get your, as Jerry said earlier, just be really cautious of confirming fees. Read stuff before you start to do it. Because you can, uh, you can waste a lot of money very fast. Uh, but we will cover stuff within Uniswap a bit more on another call where... 20 minutes over in this one. Thank you, everyone, for, for staying with us on here. Um, and Jerry, I'm, yeah, okay. Very few people are going to get rich through airdrops. I agree. Um, and it's not even about um, getting rich anywhere. Like MetaMask is the decentralized portal. Um, it's just about having a broad access to these new tools. Um, try and not come into crypto with a view to even get rich. It's a way to have... Um, own your own finance and that comes with risk but also comes with reward and they're pretty much equal because there's a lot of both Um, we're just trying to level the playing field a little bit this really is the greatest transference of wealth we have ever seen in thousands of years and so many people are not even aware of it or think it's scary or that it's bad so again we're just trying to level that playing field and be a voice for people here to have access to something and FLT is a shared space where we can not be fearful of asking any question. And that's really important because there's only two types of people in crypto, rich people and geeks. And geeks don't want to ask, you just have, you just have a stupid question and rich people aren't, well, may not be as necessarily bothered about having the conversation with you. So we're trying to bring that to everybody now. Um, so thank you for everyone that stayed with us. Thank you for all the familiar faces. Thank you for all of the new faces as well. I hope this call, let me stop this here. I hope this has been really, really useful for everybody. I have no idea why my camera is not on or where I am on a screen. So I'll just leave it for now. Um, so thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm there. I don't know why I'm not looking at it. So thanks, everyone, for coming on board. On all the new faces, we hope to see you again. Next week, we're covering uh, seed phrases. So if that's all still new to you, please come on board for that. Um, from myself and from Richard. Thank you very much for coming here. And we will see you all next week. I'll have this uploaded to YouTube 
he said that though I've got a few to do as quickly as possible, I will attempt to. Other than that, take care, guys. Have a great time. Any questions, please throw them into the group, into the FLT. Uh, and if you if people ask any questions, please reach out and help them as well. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.